Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use ODBS2 and Unreal Engine to make a game like Tower of Fantasy. Tower of Fantasy is an instance-based, persistent world multiplayer game built using Unreal Engine 4. This is easy to confirm if you just go into the files for Tower of Fantasy. You notice real quick that the folders are laid out binaries, config, content, plugins, sound familiar? Also, if you go into one of their binaries folder, you can actually see that the Unreal Engine logo is still on one of their executables. So it's very easy to tell that this is an Unreal Engine 4 game. Tower of Fantasy utilizes a backend API and instance manager similar to ODBS2. What this means is that they're using Unreal Engine servers as their game server not some kind of custom server. So this is pretty cool because it's similar to what we do in ODBS 2. Let's walk through the game and talk about how each part can be handled with ODBS 2 and Unreal Engine. When you open Tower of Fantasy, you get this screen. And I get this because I'm already logged into the game. And so what it's doing is that it is storing a login token. And it's using this login token to make sure that I don't have to log into the game each time I play it. A lot of games do this. It isn't something we currently support in ODBS2, but it is on my list to look into. It's really simple to do. Basically, the way ODBS2 currently works is that when you log in and create a session, you get a session ID, but that session ID is only valid for a certain amount of time. What we would do in addition to the session ID is we would return a login token, right? And this would be something that you could send back in place of a username and password to log back in. Some games might kick you out every 30 minutes or uh, not 30 minutes, might kick you out every 30 days. Some might let you stay in forever. Some might make it seem like it stays in forever because each time that you use the login token to log in, it gives you another login token with another amount of time. So you would only really get kicked out if it was a long period of time. What's actually kind of funny is that while I was making this video, I actually had an issue with their login token and it actually didn't know what to do. It got into a stuck state. I couldn't get into the game. I kept relaunching it. It just say login status error and I couldn't do it. What I had to do is I had to go back to the launcher, manually log out of the game, where surprisingly it had my wrong username. It thought I was TOF underscore player. So there's something going wrong there. Anyway, as soon as I logged out in the launcher, re-logged in, got a new login token, came back, and you can see it's fine. Tower of Fantasy has multiple, I'm not sure, they call them servers. I think that's the wrong word. I call them like realms. But basically what they did is they split it into different regions, Asia, Pacific, North America, Europe, South America. And you can see that there's multiple of these realms, I'm going to call them. Servers would be too confusing. And it's hard to say why they did this because we're using, they're using Unreal Engines as you'll, Unreal Engine servers in the future, as you'll see when we take a look at it, to split everybody up into separate ones that are completely self-contained. So from an Unreal Engine game server standpoint, there's no real need to split these. My guess is that it was an API issue and that they had to split it so that Luna Light here is a completely separate API from the Glades or from Starlight. And this was probably due to performance issues on the database storage side being the bottleneck. And so they just said, hey, we'll just split these into separate realms that are like completely separate copies. So in the case of ODBS2, Luna Light would be an entire copy of ODBS2 API. The Glades would be an entire copy of ODBS2 API. Starlight would be an entire copy of ODBS2 API. What we're trying to do with ODBS2 is create it in a way that it can scale well enough that they could just, all these could just be one. And there could just be one for Asia Pacific, one for North America, one for Europe, and you wouldn't need to separate all these things, which I don't really like because what ends up happening is maybe one of your friends is playing on Luna Light and you're playing on a different one and you can't play together. I think everyone should be able to play together. I don't think there should be any kind of realm separating people. So that's what we're trying to do with ODBS 2. When we tap anywhere here, it's going to log into the game. In ODBS 2, 
we would call login and create user session. And what we would do is we would send in the email and the password because we didn't have the login token system. Although we could in the future in AWS 2, we'll have a way that you can log in and create session. And instead of sending an email and password, you'll send a login token. So once we get that user session, what we would want to do is we would want to crawl, call get all characters. So you can see we send in that user session good. And what it's going to return us is it's going to return us an array of characters. And in this case, there would only be one, right? So what we would do is we would create a branch here to check and see, did the array return one character or did it return zero characters? If it returns zero characters, we would take them to the character creation process, right? But if they had already created a character, we would see that character and we would pull it from the array and we would grab the character name. And then we would call get server to connect to. This here, you can see that it actually sets the selected character to the character name and it finds us the server to connect to. So. This is the kind of process that they're doing something similar in Tower of Fantasy in the background there, where they're making a call to an API server that's connected to the instance manager. And they're saying, hey, where did this player last log out in? In ODBS, we also want to know what zone they're on. In their case, they only have one zone. Where did they log out? Where are they at? Where's their position in the world? And give me the server instance to connect them to. As we'll see in the future here, they have a channel system. And so those would be those Unreal Engine server instances. In Tower of Fantasy, we have channels, which you can access from the top left corner. And you can see that I'm on line 79 or channel 79. This is an Unreal Engine server instance that I'm connected to. I believe this game has a 20 or 30 minute cooldown on trying to change between channels, probably to stop people from sitting in one spot and farming something over and over once per server instance. So each game will have different rules around that. In Tower of Fantasy, Instead of using zones like we do in ODBS 2, the entire world map is one zone. I would estimate that this map is potentially two kilometers by two kilometers, maybe four kilometers by four kilometers. It's hard to say. Um, something around that size. One of the downsides to making the entire map one zone is that there's 50 players per server instance. But if you spread 50 players out across this huge map, what ends up happening is you rarely run into other players and it kind of feels like a single player game. So my suggestion would be to have certain hub areas be separate zones running on separate server instances that each have their own, say, 50 player cap. And what that would do is it would give the impression that there's a much larger population in these highly dense populated areas that would make more sense than people spread out out in the wilderness, make it feel less like a single player game. I'm sure the reason that they didn't want to do this is because they wanted you to be able to seamlessly move around the entire world without any loading screens. But the downside of that is that it feels much like a single player game, unless you're fighting world boss. Although even then you could sit at a world boss and wait for an hour or two and never see anyone. Sometimes you get lucky and you come upon a group that's already fighting world boss, but sadly it often just feels like a single player game. So that's something that I would design differently in your game is uh, split things into zones in a way that it will create that illusion of higher player density in places where you want the world to seem like it has higher player density. Tower of Fantasy has a crew system. This is basically like a guild in other games. This could be handled using the player group system in ODBS 2. In Tower of Fantasy, we have an inventory system and an equipment system here. 
This could be handled using custom character data in ODBS2. Since this is an Unreal Engine 4 game, Tower of Fantasy is using the world composition system to load and unload tiles in the distance. They're also using the world composition system to create LODs for distant tiles. So as we're looking at this landscape in the distance here, some of these landscape tiles are LODs rather than actual landscape. This uh, significantly improves the performance of the game, and I show how to do this in one of my tutorial series. While I can't confirm that this game is using Epic's gameplay ability system or not, this would be an excellent uh, type of game to use the gameplay ability system. This game has complex stats that lend itself perfectly to the way that Epic's gameplay ability system works, and I definitely recommend that for this kind of game that you use the gameplay ability system. I have various tutorials showing how to do this. Tower of Fantasy has various challenges where you can team up with your friends to take on uh, particular challenges. Each one of these challenges is handled in a separate server instance. In OWS2, we would use the Launch Dungeon API to spin up a zone server instance for a particular player group so that you could party up together and it would spin up a dungeon instance that you could complete and then finish the instance, get rewards, and return back to the main world. If you'd like to get started with ODBS2 and Unreal Engine and make games like Tower of Fantasy, visit openworldserver.com for setup instructions. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. Till next time, see ya.